What's up, party people? I'm Chris Bain, and this is our tri-weekly live broadcast called Geared Up, where we talk about gear, fun stuff, lighting, anything that you want to talk about in general. We take questions, we try to answer them, uh, whether it gets to me here and we answer it on air, or if you get to talk to one of our rad people hanging out in the comment section, who will be more than happy to answer your questions. If you're watching this bad boy from profoto.com, we have uh, some graphics that'll pop up around the screen. So if you want to get any more information on any of the stuff that we're talking about, uh, you could just click on one of those bad boys. On If you're watching on YouTube and on Facebook, you're not gonna see that stuff. So if you wanna see that stuff, check it out on profoto.com. But uh, you can also jump into, we have some a uh, one-on-one -on -one breakout session, and we can talk about that again towards the end. But that link is also in the comment section. So if you wanna talk to one of the rad people at Profoto one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. That being said, let's dive into what we're talking about today. So yesterday we discussed the Magnum reflector and the wide zoom reflector, some of our really, really popular hard reflectors. Today, we're gonna dive into a couple more that maybe people don't use as often or that you maybe you've seen on our site and you're like, I wonder what the heck that thing does. We're gonna talk about that today. One of those being this guy, the narrow beam reflector. Really, really, really cool reflector. Intense, intense light comes out of this thing. Uh, you can see really 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 high output uh, uh you can just from the finish whereas we were looking at something like the wide zoom reflector yesterday where it was kind of um i want to say maybe like it felt sandblasted like it had it it wasn't completely smooth it wasn't super highly reflective this thing puts out a lot of light beam spread on this thing 25 degree to 70 degrees so you can spread it out a little bit but it's really meant to be this long focused uh light source, it has a lot of depth of light. You can throw it quite a distance. Uh, it's really, really cool for um, shooting it through a window and making, uh, replicating sunlight. Does a really good job with that. Uh, hot spots though, um, it, one of the things about it is it's not, a, it's not super even whenever you're zooming in. Like the hot spot on this thing is very intense. The fall off is very intense. It's a very, very cool reflector. Uh, it is also one of those reflectors that you only want to use with something like a pro head or a D4 head or an acute head. Something that has the dome uh, and the, the light tube uh, non-recessed. And the way that this thing gathers up the light, it needs that light coming from all directions. Uh, if you put it on a flat front light, it's just not gonna do really what you want it to. Uh, you know, best case scenario, use it with like a D1 or a D2 or a B1 or a B1X with the dome attachment, but really like the acute heads, the D4 heads, uh, the pro heads is where this thing shines. So if you think you might wanna use one of these and you don't have one of those heads, you could always rent it. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. So cool stuff. Narrow beam reflector, super dope. Uh, it also takes the, um, just as a heads up, the, the same grid for the Magnum reflector, fits on this, so you use that same thing with the barn doors and all that stuff, so the, the accessories for the Magnum reflector can also fit onto the narrow beam reflector. Cool stuff. Let's talk about this bad boy right here, the Tele-Zoom. I'm gonna take it off the light stand. It is a very, very, very large hard reflector. Uh, really, really cool. Oh, uh, let me add this one thing about the narrow beam reflector. Almost forgot. This thing adds two stops more light to whatever you're shooting at its most intense setting. So like the Magnum reflector, uh, really high output, you can get a lot of light out of it. This Tele-Zoom on the other hand, still relatively high output. The finish is similar to the narrow beam reflector, uh, but this long tube takes the light and focuses it really well. So it's really good for throwing light again over really long distances. But whereas you can throw light long distances with the narrow beam reflector and get, you'll wind up with a hot spot the tele zoom is a little more even get that distance quite as focused your the 70 degree zoom range uh, with your light spread here whereas you have 25 to 70 with the narrow beam so once again you can tighten that up and get that hot spot this thing is going to still give you that long throw that depth of light that you're looking for but it's going to be a little more even really really good for working at distances uh super cool modifier again same uh, diameter as, as uh, the narrow beam and the magnum scenario, the pro tube that fit on there. So you can cut and sculpt the light well. Uh, but like I said, one in the stop and a half 
more stops of light out of this thing than you would get with the head by itself. So not quite as powerful as the Magnum and the narrow beam reflector, but still you're getting more light output, which is really, really cool. This one you can use with uh, some of the flat front lights. Again, it's not gonna be as, uh, it's, it's not gonna be as effective as it could be with the uh, exposed dome flashes. Uh, these, a lot of these hard reflectors were designed around like the, the older acute packs, the, the older pro packs and stuff like that, our compact series of mono lights and stuff like that. Uh, again, work better with, because you have a lot around beam, pretty much a no-go. Narrow beam should be exposed dome only. So, Kind of make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Direct even light, all that good stuff. I have notes because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. That being said, let's take some photos with these bad boys. I'm gonna show you the zoom. I'm gonna show you how well they zoom. You can see that you'll be able to see the light spread with the, we'll turn off the, the overhead, at least this one right here. A little interference with your mic pack. Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Let me try to aim it a little more direct. I can hear you perfectly now. We're good. Is it? I just didn't know if, is my, if my jacket's like smack in the pack of my, nah. my reflector. And my fat neck is probably also not doing super good. There we go. Let's just rock, rock it like that. Yeah, cool. We're good. Sorry, we got fat. We lost you again. Oh. Is there it's, uh, some sort of interference happening with the audio? Weird. Yeah. Are you losing me in your headphones? Uh-huh. Super weird. Um, I'm going to clip this up here. <laughs> I'm just going to clip. See each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to clip this here. Hopefully that doesn't get mad. I wonder why. It, I'm going to I'm going to take a step back. Hold on. We're just testing something really fast before we go. Am I still here? Can you get you yeah. got me? What if I bend over again like I just did? We're still good? Oh, we seem fine now. Okay, cool. We're going to awkwardly leave this pack clipped to my shirt <laughs> because that's the thing to do where you zoom yeah i can only do this it's like line of sight um this is working on the fly this is live stuff people um so we're gonna we turn those lights off i'm gonna show you the zoom uh, kind of like how the light focuses with them then we're gonna take some shots so you can see what they look like with the photographs and then if you have any questions we'll take those questions as well um Sweet, let's do that. So let's take the, let's go narrow beam first. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, you know, let's see. Narrow beam reflector. I'm also gonna kind of look in the screen to make sure that like, I know that it's gonna be a lot of light. So, but I just don't want people to be able to see it. Let's turn that on. That's a lot of light, but you still should be able to see how it zooms. You'll see how intense it gets as it, it, it zooms in on Kate's face. So um, I'm gonna move over to the sticker here so you can kinda, we can talk about the, the zoom spreads. So the cool thing about the narrow beam is it kinda zooms in, uh, in reverse of what you would normally see. Um, so whereas you would normally push the reflector forward on the flash head, you get the, a tighter light spread. This one works the opposite. As you start to pull the light back, the beam spread gets tighter. It's kinda neat. So this is actually, all the way forward is its widest beam pattern. That's, you know, 70 degrees. That's pretty nice. It's pretty diffuse, pretty even. Um, hits a good amount edge to edge. I'm also trying to pay attention right here while Kate's away from the thing to make sure that you can hear me. So, but as we start to zoom this thing, watch the intensity increase. Look at that, hot spot, a palooza. And then right around that nine setting right here, you don't have, you could, yeah, keep your eyes closed for a second, but right around that nine setting, that's where you're gonna get that most intense hot spot. Uh, you could see it get really big. And then once you go past nine, it starts to kind of feather itself back out a little bit. So you have a little spot behind it too where it'll, it'll start to feather back out, but really, really intense light. Let's go tele-zoom. Cool. So the tele-zoom, again, is the opposite. So at it's at the, furthest point forward, so around that zoom setting of four, the light is gonna be more intense. It's gonna be right around that 30 degree range. Let's get that right there for. So that's your 30 degree. You have a little bit of a hot spot. I'm shining it right in Caitlin's face and I'm sure she's super happy with me. But as you start to push it back, you can see it starts to even out a lot. And then look at that. 
once you get right there to 10, it's a 70 degree beam spread, but look how, how wide that light throw is. Pretty wide, right? But it's still intense and it's still gaining a little bit of output. And it's, it, it throws the light pretty far. Very cool stuff. I have the tele zoom up there. Let's take photos with the tele zoom first because why not? So I know stopwise, just in experimenting, kind of where I need to be settings wise. And um, we'll do that. So let's go to 3.5 there. Make sure that's pointed right at Kate. And here we go. So this is the tele zoom at its widest light positioning. So um, that 70 degree beam spread. So here we go, Kate, right here. Three, two, one. Really cool. So now we're going to zoom it forward. I think I had the hands backwards. It doesn't matter either way. It looked nice. It looked nice. It looked fabulous. It looked fabulous. Cool. And so this is going to be zoomed in a lot tighter. I know that I'm going to have to pull the, the light power back. Uh, I'm going to bring it back there. I think this is the right output. We'll see. This is roughly what I think it should be. So three, two, one. Yeah, I nailed it. I'm not too bad at this. Cool. Um, very cool stuff. That was the tele zoom uh, from its tightest beam spread to its widest beam spread. And we'll put them up side by side like we always do at the end so you can see all that stuff. But it's a really cool modifier. You know what? Let's just. not kick that thing over in case you're wondering why i should have a whole bunch of cups right there to hang my stuff on so let's go to on this thing the widest beam spread which is that the 70 which is right here when you put the reflector on and since i know that 70 is probably roughly the same power output we'll see but here we go three two one. Oh, actually you know what I'll take it back it actually needs to be powered up Yep. Three, two, one. Lovely. And now let's power this bad boy back down because I know once I do this, it's going to get hot in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is right there. Heavy, heavy hot spot, like I said again. Turn that light down. I might actually even have to turn it down a little bit lower, but we'll see. Nope, that's perfect. Really cool modifier. All right, let's turn this off and we'll get over here and chitty chat about some stuff. We'll see if y'all have any questions about anything. And then we can dive into these photos. Slide this bad boy over. Got my microphone stuck to my neck. Hopefully it's making sound. See, I hear you. All right, good. Good. Cool. Ready to rock and roll, Kate. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. I'm just going to put them all up there side by side, Zs. We ready to go? Got them? Cool. Yeah. Just to make sure that I'm here. See, I got my pack. I'm wearing it. It's Looks right there. Good. It looks so good. Cool. Let's see. So, we were talking about the telezoom reflector. Once again, really, really even light spread. Like if you look, uh, you know what, let's get rid of the narrow beam. That way we can just kind of look at them a little bigger. So really even light spread. I mean, look at the light hitting Kate right here from top to bottom, really smooth, really even. Honestly, it's probably a skosh underexposed. That was just me kind of guessing. So there you go. But really, really even light top to bottom. I mean, from the, the bottom of the jacket to the top of the hat. It's really, really smooth. And then you can take that light and you can point it out and you can get it to kind of just focus on what it is you want to focus on. But the cool thing about that, still being a hard light, the tele zoom is really smooth. I mean, look how even the light is from the hand up to the top of the, you know, top of the forehead. Really, really smooth light. It is pointed, so the light fall off is going to, you know, I messed up the way I was saying that. The light is going to fall off, and that's what it has done in the shot. So you can see right here, much darker than it was over here. And the light position never changed. All we did was took a reflector and pushed it forward or, 
or pushed it backwards or pulled it forward on the flash head itself. So it's really cool that you can get a lot of different looks out of something like that. So, but again, the parts that are illuminated where the light was pointed are really even, no big hot spots. So let's go here to the narrow beam. Has, has anyone asked anything? Mm -mm. Okay, I'm trying to make sure that like I'm not missing anything on the YouTubes or anything like that. I very much could be. Uh, let's see. Then on the narrow beam, once again, you were able to get it out to that 70 degrees, so you could expect the 70 degrees of the narrow beam and the, and the tele zoom to look relatively similar, and they do. The one thing I will say is the 70 degree, 70 degree of the, let's pull this up so you can see it. The 70 degree of the uh, tele zoom, there's a lot more illuminated here. So even though this is a, a, a roughly the same beam spread, the narrow beam is a longer light. It is a more pointed light and it does fall off way more dramatically uh, than the tele zoom does. So that's a big thing to check out right there. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I was pulling up to see if there were any comments and I'm letting people <laughs> chat. Um, so, but the, I mean, just look at the difference between same power settings for the most part on the, actually the exact same power settings on the flash, same technical beam spread, but I mean, look at that drastically different. So I think that's kind of cool. Let's see, let's get rid of that again. But as we start to get up here, you can see there's a little bit more of a hot spot on the cheek once that starts to zoom in a little bit tighter. Uh, you can see that there's actually, let's bring this up so you can see it. You can see it, this is, w there's way more light getting back here to the background from that intensity uh, than necessarily the tele zoom. It's, the tele zoom is getting some light back there, but this is definitely brighter. And then you can see up here at the top, there's more light, but it's really, really cool stuff. So to be able to get that much light output out of a reflector, uh, and then to also be able to get that depth out of a reflector is really, really cool. And then again, you have the ability to, with the tele zoom, take light and throw it really, really far. Uh, and you're able to do that in a manner that's very, very even. Whereas you can take that same light and throw it a little bit further with the narrow beam reflector, but it's gonna be way more pointed, more hot spots, but it's a very, very, very nice light. Cool reflector, again, remember with the narrow beam reflector, you wanna use that uh, dome just to make sure that it's eating up the light the way it wants to and going forward. You don't wanna use that with the flat front light. The tele zoom you could use with a flat front light, but still, best served with something with an exposed dome. So that's gonna be it for talking about the narrow beam reflector and the telezoom reflector today. Pretty fun stuff. We broke down the pros and the cons, shot some photos, showed you the zoom effect, neat stuff. So if you want any information, like I said uh, at the beginning of the show, if you wanna talk some more about any of this stuff, if uh, you clicked on one of these links and you're like, oh, I wanna, I have a, a specific question about this, you can jump into one of our one-on-one -on -one breakout sessions. Uh, we have the link in the description and you can do all that good stuff there. So in the meantime, I'm gonna be signing off for the day. I'm Chris, we'll be back tomorrow for more Geared Up. Peace out, we'll see you later.